The next thing we have down here is table layout setup. Now this is where you are setting up your table layout screen. Now, take a look at what I've got up on the screen right now. That is probably not what you normally see on your screen. Okay, I'm just going to come up to the top here, and I'm going to go to display background. Okay, this is probably more like what you actually see on your screen right now. And what this is is basically the, the, the default setting for the table layout screen. I'm going to show you how to pretty it up and, and do all kinds of funky stuff with it. But we're going to start with here with this blank screen. Now before we get into any of the controls up at the top, let's first take a look down at the table section down below. And you'll see down here, for example, I've got a couple of things. First of all, uh, I have these gray lines that show up here. Now what these are, these are guidelines. Okay? They will not show up within the front end, but they do show up within here. And they are to help guide you through uh, the screen display. To, uh, so that you can have some idea in terms of, of uh, the dimensions that you're working with on this. Now, if I come up to this uh, top thing where it says Layout Settings, and then within here, I'm going to go out to Layout Resolution. You'll see within here right now, it's set up for 1024 by 768. Now, my laptop screen, and I apologize for this, I forgot to set it to a 1024 display, and really I need to do that. Uh, <laughs> hopefully I won't mess anything up when I do it. But because I, I do want to show you how it, it properly looks within here. Well, no, maybe I'll just leave it. I'm not going to mess around with things. Uh, in here, we have a 1024 by 768 uh, display, which means all of the stuff that you want to do for a single dining section for a 1024 resolution would fit within those lines there. That would be one dining section and another dining section here. And if I scroll down a little bit, then oh, then you'll see that I've got another line here, and these are other dining sections as well. One, two, three, four, and there are many more uh, that can be applied to this as well. And you're not certainly not restricted to four within this. Uh, but if I come to this and change the layout resolution, let's say to an 800 by 600, for example, you'll see now I've got much smaller uh, areas here. So there's an 800 by 600, 800 by 600, and so on for each one of those. In this, I'm just going to set this back. To 1024. Also, if you're working with something other than that, then you can set up and you can define the resolution here. And also, if you want to just remove those lines altogether, you don't you don't need them or whatever the case, then you can just select on that. In which case, then they they will when I select on OK, they will disappear from the screen. But we'll leave them as they are right now. <coughs> okay. So now coming up <coughs> to the top left corner, what we're going to do here is we're going to start playing around with some of these controls here. And the first thing I have is this, uh, this thing here that says table, and it's got a circle above it. So basically, there are three shapes of tables that you can apply to the floor layout screen. The first one being a round table, the second one being a square table, and the third one being a diamond-shaped table. Now, to add a table to the system, we just select on the desired one and do a click and drag down to the, the dining section. Now, you'll notice that when I let go of my button, it now comes up with a keypad, and on here it's asking for a table number. Now remember, I've got 150 tables in there by default. It's now prepared to add on additional tables if I want. In this case, I'm going to work with those existing records. So to do that, I'm going to change this from a 152 to a 1, which means I'm going to work with the first uh, table record within the, uh, within the screen that we looked at earlier on. And so I'm going to click on OK. And there we go. So I now have table 1 showing up on the screen right now, and it's a circle table. I'm going to do another table. This time I'll do a square one. I'll do a click and drag down. And notice now it automatically increments up to two. And it'll go three, four, five, and so on. And we'll do table three. All right, so here we have our three tables in my dining section right now. A, a circle, a square, and a diamond-shaped table. Now, within these, what you can do is you can use these guides right here if you want to kind of use a standardized set for these. By default, these are considered large tables right now. So if I wanted to, for example, change the size of one of these tables, so just select on it, it now highlights in yellow, and then from here I can change it from large to a medium. And here I can select on this one and change it to a regular. Okay, so you'll see we've got different sizes now that you can play with on these. And uh, from there, you can apply them onto the screen that way. Now, I'm looking at table three, for example, and right now, well, that's kind of small. Really, I want a bigger table than this, and I want to play around with it a little bit and make it a little bigger. Now, in choosing this, and it's now highlighted in yellow, you'll notice up to the upper left of that icon, I have this little 
uh, square that shows up in there. And this is actually for you to place your, your mouse pointer right on it. And then if I do a click, you'll notice now as I'm holding down my button, my icon or my uh, pointer now changes to a diagonal icon. And then from here, I can do a, a drag. So it's a click and drag. And from here, I can make that table as big as I want. All right, so coming back to number two. All right, so there's a, a little square table right now. And I don't want a square table. I don't want a rectangle table. So I just do a click. Ooh, let's try that again. Got to get right on there. And then drag it up like this. And there's a nice long table. And as far as my circle one, you can play around with that as well. So here I've got my three tables, and I've just made them bigger and kind of played around with the size on them as well. Okay, the next thing we have here are all these patterns. Now, actually, I'm going to bypass these patterns and come back to them uh, shortly because these are all related to these three icons right up here. And this is a rounded square, a circle, and a square. Now, these are actually objects that you can apply onto the system. So on here, for example, if I want to put, let's say, a rug underneath these, then I'm going to make uh, a rug out of the rounded square, for example. So I'll select on that. And now with the button pressed, I can come down here and do a click and drag. And there's my big rug that's going to go underneath these tables. Now, the problem is I just threw the rug over top of the tables. And so as you can see now, I've got a big blue rug uh, sitting on top of these tables, which I can't access now. Can't do anything with it. So um, within this, again, I'll come back to these later. But within this, what I can do now is I can actually change around a few things with this rug. The first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to change the color of it. So if I come over to this, you'll see I come up with a color palette. And from here, I can choose a different color. But I'm not actually highlighted on that yet. So the first thing you want to do is be able to select that. To do it, select on Edit. Make sure that's pressed down. And then choose the item. OK, so now it's in big yellow. And there's, there's my, uh, my table. And of course, in the upper left, there's the little icon there. So I can change around the shape of it again as well if I wish. Now, having selected that, I can now go into this. And I'll say, for example, I'm going to make this kind of like a, a light yellow table. OK, or a light yellow rug. So here we have this light yellow rug now that's showing up within there, very pretty, but still sitting over on top of the tables. Now, I still have edit selected, so if I choose it once again, this time I can come over to these icons, which is bring to front and send to back, which allows you to layer things. In this case, I'm going to send this rug to the back of the display. And in doing that, I now have my tables showing up over top of it. And then when I just unselect it, there we go. So I've got my yellow rugs sitting underneath three blue tables, uh, which is tables one, two, and three. The tables are always blue. Uh, the reason being is because they're color coded at the front end, remember. Okay, where we've got blue tables are available, red tables are selected, and you're working on them. And kind of like a gold or a yellow table uh, means that uh, it's being used by another server. And uh, so that's why they're always blue. And uh, we'll just leave it at that. I should also point out as well, because we're working with a, a database record for each one of these tables, you cannot set them up as an alphanumeric table. They must be numeric all the time. Now, that being said, if you want a table A2, for example, you can't do that. But what you can do is if you are working with tables that you want to kind of differentiate them a little bit, then as I had mentioned earlier on, you, you don't have to go through 1 through 150. You can actually go 100 series of table, 200 series of table, 300 series of table, and so on. Uh, so you can you can change the numbers on them uh, to reflect different dining sections that way, uh, if you wish. All right. So uh, within here, I've shown you how to create an object. And you can use any one of these things. Now, also within here, we have a couple of other icons as well. We have the, uh, the text icon, and we also have a line icon as well. So the line icon, pretty straightforward. I select on this, and I want to draw a line. And there we go. OK, so you can just draw individual lines that way. Now, the next thing we have here is the text. If I want to throw some kind of a title on it, for example, like the dining section it may represent, I can select on this. And then when I come down to the, uh, the dining section, I just click on where I want the text to start. And I select on that. And here I come up with this text string. And then here I will say, Scott's dining section. Oh, I'm a little limited in my. 
in my text I can put in there. But we have something like that, and there is Scott's dining section on this. Now, be careful here, because I still have this selected. If I choose to select anywhere, click anywhere else on the screen right now while this is pressed down, then it's going to ask for another text string. And then you're going to find the word text string all over your, your, uh, your floor layout. You really don't want to do that. So make sure you just select on anything else to get it off that, to unselect that, uh, in order to bring it back to what it was. Now, you'll see within here, I now have, for example, Scott's dining section, and it's, it, it's kind of small and kind of looks a little cheesy and so on. We can actually fix that up as, as well. There's a lot we can uh, with, do with these, these things. And one of the things so we can do here, for example, is we can come up to where we have layout font. Okay, and font, and uh, yeah, we'll go with the layout font. Okay, so in here, when I select on this, this pertains to all the text that shows up within the floor layout screen. And right now, it's uh, in a Microsoft uh, sans serif and uh, regular size and eight font on this. And if I want, for example, I'll change it to something like a uh, Mahara, for example. I'll make it bold and bleak, and we'll beef it up to maybe a size 16, uh, maybe 24. OK, and so we'll go with something like that. And you see now, the text on it has changed considerably from what it was before. And, and so you can really beef it up that way as well. All right. Um, now, getting back to these, uh, all these little shapes and, and things like that. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to choose my rug again. And instead of uh, it being like a, a carpet, let's say we want to give it some kind of a pattern to it. Then I can actually go into this, and I can choose maybe like a, a crisscross pattern. So that it's still yellow, but it's in a crisscross pattern. Here, maybe I can change this to green, see if that uh, helps any. Ooh, we got to choose it first. There we go. I'll actually, choose a darker green too. There we go. And so now we have our tables on this uh, this rug that has kind of a green crisscross on it. Or if you're doing something like maybe like an indoor patio and you want to do like a miter cut, you know, wood pattern or something like that. Then again, we can uh, choose on this, you know, change the pattern to something, and uh, you know, you can change around the, the the pattern that way. So that's basically what that represents is all that kind of stuff. And of course, you can make this look beautiful, or you can make it look but ugly, depending on your level of artistic talent with all this stuff. Now, one more thing I'm going to show you within this uh, this thing is this uh, last thing right here, which is snap to grid. Okay. Now, when you're taking a look, for example, I'm going to move table number two here, and I'm going to reposition it around and take a look at this. You'll notice it's a little bit choppy as I move it. And the reason being is that there's actually a built-in grid inside this. And the purpose of this grid is to help you line things up properly. But you may want to position something just a little between the grid, so for example. And so, excuse me. Sorry about that, folks. All right, so in here, if I want to change around how this appears, like this, and, and position it just in the right spot, then I can unselect Snap to Grid, in which case now when I move it around, it's very smooth, and I can be very precise in terms of where I want to position it. And there you go. Okay, So you can be very specific on that. All right, let's come up to the pull-down menus across the top and see what other stuff we can do here. First of all, I'm going to start way over on the right here. We've got Layout Settings. So as I did, earlier, I showed you layout font where we can change around the font that shows up with all the text on the, on the floor layout screen. We also have floor color. The way this looks right now, if I was to put this on my system and, and present it on the POS, it would show up with a white background with this kind of green miter cut rug on here and so on. And what I can do is actually give some color to the floor. By selecting on this, I again come up with my color palette. And then from within here, I can choose a color. And there we go. Yes, it's ugly, but yes, you can do it. And so in here, you can change around the floor color by doing that. I'm going to make it something a little more subtle. OK, so there's, there's a gray, for example, on there. Now, one thing I should point out as well, when you do uh, go into uh, the floor color, or any of the other any other time that you come up with this color palette, you do have this thing that says define custom colors. And from here, you can get into a very exact uh, color scheme for this. Just bear in mind, though, that when you're working with different machines, sometimes the resolution and the settings uh, for the RGB codes, red, green, blue, uh, they might be just a little bit different, and the shades might appear a little bit different between them as well. If you go with the basic colors 
within here. They will always be, you know, pink will be pink and red will be red and orange will be orange. Uh, but if you work with the the, uh, the custom ones, you I can't guarantee that you're going to get an exact match up with the shades every time. So just kind of bear that in mind as well. Okay, the next thing we have down here is a layout resolution, as I showed you earlier and explained all that. And then underneath that, we have display background. Now, display background shows me something a lot more nicer looking than a plain old uh, background. And as you see here, I've got this uh, nifty little floor layout that's uh, showing up in here. So let's talk about how to get something like that on there. Um, what you're looking at right now, actually, I'll tell you what here. Let's start with a, a whole new layout. Well, here, I'll just exit out of here. No, and I'll just go back in again. Where am I? There we go. Okay, so here we are right now with this nifty little floor layout image that's showing up on here. Now, what you're looking at actually is just a I was just, when I was learning the system, because of course I have to learn everything that I'm teaching as well, so uh, when you're going through and kind of taking a look at all the different things that you can do on the, on the system, one of the things I was doing was I was trying to create my own floor layout screen. And on here, um, I, was, I think I had PowerPoint up on, on the screen at the time. And so what I did was I just created a bunch of uh, screen layouts, floor layouts, uh, within PowerPoint. You can use any form of graphic package of any kind uh, that you wish and uh, to create the, these things, including photographs as well. What you're looking at right now is actually uh, an image um, that I created. Each one of these uh, images here actually was a separate one I created. Then I just kind of tuck them all together. And each one is given a, a screen display of 1024 by 768 and uh, when I design these things. And all I did was basically, for example, this, this, uh, this kind of like a gravel type uh, floor here for around the pool, for example, uh, what I did was I just created a big box and I filled it in with an image that I, I just pulled off the internet. Okay, you can go in and find little you know, patterns of different things and so on. And I just filled it with that. And then all these uh, little shrubs that I have here, for example, these are just uh, clip art images that uh, I pulled off again from PowerPoint, and then just uh, filled them up with uh, other image with other patterns that I pulled off the internet, like uh, like bushes or grass or something like that. Uh, this is a, a water one that I found on the internet. This is a marble one, and so on like that. So these are just patterns that I pulled off the internet, and then from here I created all these different shapes and 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 clip art I items and so on, and I just kind of filled them in with stuff, and I came up with something a little little pretty. You know, not too bad and uh, to come up with all these different things and I <coughs> excuse me I set each one of these up with 1024 by 768 as I said here and this particular one has four of these dining sections so there's my pool side there's my terrace and a couple other dining sections down below and so now after I, I had created all of those and I came up with my one master image kind of think of this like a, a Windows desktop wallpaper type type thing is I saved it all in my Pixel POS folder. And I gave it the name floorlayout.jpg. Okay, so it's a JPEG file. And the name of the JPEG file is floor layout, one word, F-L-O-O-R-L-A-Y-O-U-T. Okay, that is the name of the file. Now, Pixel Point will actually look for that file within uh, the folder. And if it does have it in there, it will automatically apply it to the system. Uh, so that being said, all you have to do is just rename it to that, and it's sitting in the Pixel POS folder. Boom, there's your back, back, uh, your background for the system. Now, what's really clever about this, okay, this is kind of a for the salespeople now. Not only does pretty sell, but you're going to find, like when you're trying to sell Pixel Point, for example, that a lot of people, they come up with their point of sale systems and they have dazzling looking floor layouts. But the rest of the point of sale system is a piece of crap. And the reason being is that they focus so much on making it pretty to sell it rather than the functionality of the system. Now, Pixel Point, we were able to come up with a better solution. And because what happens quite often is they'll come up with all of these different little tools that you can throw on to the background to make it look pretty. Like if I want a staircase, if I want a bar, if I want a, a swimming pool or something like that. They would actually have to create all these graphic images to do that. And every time 
a server comes back to the table layout screen, it has to regenerate all of these objects as well, and it slows down the performance of the system. You don't want that with your pixel point system. So what we did was basically said, you know what, the background is not important to the functionality of the system. It looks pretty, it helps with orientation of where you're dealing with on the floor layout, but it's just a picture. So that being said, we used Windows Approach for <laughs> wallpaper and did the same thing, where the floor layout uh, JPEG file is just a piece of a wallpaper that just sits in the background, and then you're actually laying your table template on top of that. This is why right now I don't have a, te a template loaded up on the screen, but I've got this big picture showing up with all the dining sections and so on, is because I haven't actually applied my floor layout on top of it. Just think of it as a transparency with all your functional tables, and you're laying it right over top. That's what this does. Now, within here, I actually did create a floor layout to match up with all of this. And if I come up to File, and I come down to Load Layout, you'll see within here, I'm brought into my Pixel POS folder, and I just kind of scroll down. And it's looking for anything with an FLR extension. That's a floor layout extension. Now, right now, you're probably working with the standard one that comes with the blank database, and that won't really match up with this, this image. But I did actually create one as well, and this is included within the download off the My Part website of Demo Floor Section 1024. Uh, this is one that I create, one that I created to match up with my, my image that I created. And so I'll select on OK, or Open. And here now, I have all of my uh, tables applied <coughs> excuse me, to each one of the nine dining sections. <coughs> Sorry about that. OK. So within here, for example, I have this dining section with the swimming pool. And as you can see, I've got tables 1 through 5, 6 through 10, 11 through 14 that I created within here. And they're all circle tables, and all of these I created in a slightly different size. So these ones are larger, and these ones are smaller. Now, also within here as well, I may want to change around the seating capacity on these, because remember within the front end, when it shows up a table, it will have these little nodules that show up off of the sides of it, identifying seats, where you've got two-seaters, four-seaters, and so on like that. And so in here, if I wanted to make uh, these tables, for example, two-seaters, you could go into that previous section I showed you for the table settings, and then there, say, tables one through five, we'll have a two, 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 just modify each one of those records. An easier way to do this is actually by tagging the tables. I'm going to show you how to tag a table. So tagging means that I want to apply a common change to all of these tables. Now, I, what I've done here is I've done my click and drag. I brought them all down, and I stuck them in exactly the spot I wanted. Now what I want to do is make a common change to each one of these. So I go to the table number one, and on my, my keyboard, I hold down the control key, and then I go click. I come down to table number two, still holding down the control key, click, and table three, click. So what I've done now is I, by holding down the control key, I can make multiple selections, just like Windows. And then within here, if I right click on it, on any one of them, I come up with this little uh, tag menu. And on here, I can make a common change to all of these items. Now let's just take a look at some of the changes I can make to this. First of all, we've got table information. Now on here, just don't really worry so much about that. The table information is the stats that show up on it in terms of the minimum, maximum, so on like that. But down below are some other things that we can actually change on this. For example, change the table number. Remember I was talking about the 100, 200, 300 series? <coughs> so in here, you choose as far as the, the first number uh, that would show up in here in, in case, you know, on table 1, I could change it to 100. And it'll be 101, uh, 101, 102, 103, for example. That kind of thing. So this is where you can make changes to the table numbers that way. Also, change the number of seats as well. Uh, right now, if they're set at 4 and I want to change them to a 2, or 2, I want to change to a 4, something like that, you can select on this keypad will come up and you identify what the seating, uh, how many seats are at that table, or all of those tables. Change the table type. Okay, the table type right now is a circle, and I can change it to a square or a diamond. Change the table section. This is really nifty here. When you're setting up different dining sections, for example, I can select on this, and it will come up with my list of all the different dining sections. And from here, I can choose pool slide. 
and change the sail type as well. So within here, by default, whatever is set up for the station there in terms of it being a dine-in or a patio or a takeout or whatever, uh, you can change the sail type for these given tables as well. Now down below that, I also have a couple of things here I can do. Align left side and align top sides. Now what this will do is that, uh, for example, when I'm trying to line up my tables just right, it will look for the table that is furthest to the left on the screen and it will line up all of the other tables that you selected with that left alignment. So that way they will all be in a straight column. And if I'm trying to put them all across this way, then I can say align top sides, in which case then whichever one is furthest to, to the top of the screen, then it will line up all of those so that they are at, at the same uh, horizontal uh, level as well. So that's what you can do when you're tagging tables, is just make a common change like that. And again, to do that, just hold down the control key and click on them as you, as you go through each one of those tables. Now, I'll come down to other things within here in a moment, but let's uh, first finish off what we've got here. So I've got my display background showing up. I've gone through all of these. Next, we have over here, edit object. Now, remember an object is an item uh, like a, the rounded square, the rug that I created, for example, or the circle or a square or something like that. And if you want to do any further work with these, for example, uh, let's say I, I want to have several bars that I've created or several of these bushes. Actually, I did that with these. Uh, this. No, well, no, not necessarily with this one because, of course, this was within an image. But let's say I, I did a, I created something here. Okay, here's, there's a, there's an object I, I create on the screen, and I want to use that, let's say, multiple times within the system. Then what I can do is I can actually edit and select on that so it's highlighted, and then within here I can go into edit object and I can duplicate object, for example, and now I have two of them exactly the same size and you can continue doing that. If for any reason I want to remove one, then I just select on Highlight It, and then Edit and Remove Object. And it's taken off the thing. And this also applies to text on there as well. Now, this is text that I applied within the image, but if there was the, you know, the Scott's Dining section, for example, like that, then I can actually remove that from here as well using Edit Object. Okay, now coming back to File. Okay, so new layout, I want to create a whole new layout, pretty self-explanatory. Load an existing layout, I just did, and that shows you what you can do. Uh, save the layout, so if I've given it an, uh, a name, then I can save it and just update it that way. Or save as and save it as a different name, so that's all pretty straightforward stuff. Now, down below here, we have a couple of other things as well. Print layout section and open print editor. Now, let's talk about print layout section. <clears throat> now, thinking back to when I talked about host hostess, remember that where you're a person and you're at the front entrance and you're seating people and dealing with the lineup and so on like that. And I showed you the application of host hostess, but that means that you have to have a station set up there in order to manage all these people. Now, we go to the establishment and they say, well, you know what, that, that is really great and I would love to do that, but I just don't have the budget for it right now. Uh, so, you know, I just have this this table and I've got uh, you know, a, a drawing of my my, uh, my floor layout from here. They just use a marker and they say who's going to be seated where, and they and they highlight it. and And I just let them work with the manual system that way. Well, that's that's fine and dandy, and and quite often you see that at many places, and they'll have this cheesy looking drawing of the floor layout. It would be nice though if they had something a little more professional looking, a little nicer, and a little more accurate uh, in terms of the floor layout. Well, we actually have a middle road that you can do within that, and that is print layout section. Now, in here, if I want to do, uh, let, let's say I wanted the person, they are working with you know the manual system, but it'd be nice if the point of sale system could actually provide me with a drawing of that instead of them having to do it you know with a crayon and a piece of paper. And actually, you can do that with Pixel Point. You go into print layout section. Now in here, it's going to come up with all the different dining sections, and in here I'm going to say, for example, poolside. So I'm going to select on that, and I'm going to provide them with a nice printed layout of that. Oh, okay, yes, it already exists. There we go. Okay, because I've already done this before. Okay, so here is now um, basically a cropped image of the uh, dining section for the swimming pool area. And you'll see within here, it's basically exactly the same as what we just looked at on the floor layout screen. But take a look. I'm actually down in that next section, which is the print editor. 
And uh, from here, I can now make some, some changes to this as well, or I can just print it off as it is. But let's say, <clears throat> for example, I wanted to make some changes to it. All right, so what are some of the changes we can do? Well, I mean, basically, it's pretty straightforward stuff here, but I'll kind of give you an idea of some of the things we can play around with. First of all, I've got here fill. Okay, now everything shows up in blue right now, and it looks pretty, pretty decent. But for some reason, I want to maybe change the color of some of these tables. Uh, so what I can do is I'm going to, to uh, fill. And on this as well, I guess I'm going to need to uh, choose some kind of a, a color as well. You'll see right now it shows up as a white, and uh, maybe I'll come up here. I'll make them kind of like a, a yellow. Okay, and now I'll come down here, and I've got my my uh, little icon showing up like that. And I'll say, for example, tables six, seven, eight, nine, and ten are now now all showing up in yellow. Uh, now I can change the color maybe to I don't know. We've got blue. Let's do pink. And over here, I'll do pink, 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 and pink. Okay, so basically what I'm doing here is just a, a drawing type application, kind of like paint and so like that, where I've actually filled in different colors of these things. If you have a color printer, this looks really nifty. And from here, now what's the whole point of doing this? Well, what I can do is actually I can say, for example, that I want to uh, allocate these tables to different servers. Okay, so what servers do we want to do? Well, let's the, just throw in now uh, a label on this. So I'll select on label and label font. Okay, so we'll do for example, we'll, you know, we'll just choose. We got all kinds of stuff here. No, that's that's kind of ugly. Okay, there we go. Just something and right now we'll do bold. Okay, and we'll make it a size 14. And now from here, I've got pink tables and I've got yellow tables. And over here, I'm going to say for example, I'm choose on this, and in my print string, I will say. Sue's tables. And so there's Sue's tables. And over here, Sam's tables. And so now what I've done here is I've actually done a little bit of editing on this floor layout uh, where it shows accurately as it shows up on the point of sale system. But also within this as well, I've allocated out pink tables being Sue's, yellow tables being Sam's. Isn't that nice and pretty? And then from all this now, I can <clears throat> go about uh, printing this off. I can also save this as well. So if normally on a Tuesday night, I have Sue and Sam working, and they're working their, these tables in this dining section, I can just save this on the system, bring it up, and boom, just print it off, and you're ready to go. All right, and I'm going to exit on that. Save changes, no. We'll leave that as it is. And now I'm back to the table layout screen again. All right, so that's everything that you can do within print layout and then open print editor as well, which brings that up, and I can I can load that up. Okay, now one more thing that I'm going to show you before we're finished with this as well, <coughs> and that is how do I make this dining section that I created here? How do I de identify that as poolside? Because if I save it as it is right now, and I go into the front end and I've got my dining sections, and I select poolside, it doesn't take me anywhere. If I select on terrace, it doesn't take me anywhere. The reason being is that we need to now tag each one of these dining sections to its appropriate dining section, okay? So that when I choose poolside, it's actually going to bring me to this section of the screen. To do that, what you do is you go to the center of that dining section and you double click. And what we have here is a window that says create section marker four. And in here I have a list of all the dining sections that I've created. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to match up each one of these sections on, on the, the layout with the appropriate dining section. So in this case, this would be poolside. So I select on that, OK. And now, when I select on poolside within the front end, it will take me to this section of the layout right here. And if I choose on the terrace, it will take me to that one, and so on. All right, so that's how you go about uh, playing around with the uh, floor layout screen, how you can create all kinds of different little things with it as well. Okay. Now, the next thing we have down here is table drawing. Pretty simple stuff here. Within table drawing, you have a choice between two-dimensional, which was the older versions of Pixel Point. We used to be just two-dimensional tables that showed up. And then around version 8 or 9, we came up with three-dimensional tables, a little more nicer looking. Uh, so then you can change them over to that. And so when I go into the table layout screen at the front end, they will show up in, in either two-dimensional layout or three-dimensional layout. And of course, by default, the one we all kind of like is the 
3D with shadow. Now, if you're really restricted on uh, memory usage, okay, so I've got an older machine, it's got just a little bit of RAM, I'm trying to cut down all the bells and whistles and make it as simple as possible. You may want to take it off the 3D with shadow and knock it back maybe to a 2D, two-dimensional uh, display, in which case then that will save just a little bit of, of RAM on there as well, especially if you've got a lot of tables on there. Now the last thing we have within here is reservations, and we put it under table setup because uh, you can take if you're taking reservations, you're going to be reserving a table generally. Uh, so if that that being the case, you can do it right from here. Now we have reservation capability at the front end in a couple of areas. You may recall that if you go into manage your functions, uh, you can actually select uh, reservations within there. Also, if you go into the table. Uh, layout or the table management screen host hostess function obviously there is reservation capability within there as well where you can take a reservation but let's say you're a manager you're sitting in the back office you're working on the system the place isn't open yet and someone calls up and said I like to take a reservation rather than going to the front end to do it you can actually do it from back office as well you just go into here and reservations <coughs> and within here I'm in the reservation screen I can go in and add a reservation and come up with this whole, whole process, which I've already shown you. And you can walk through and take a reservation directly from the back office. And that's how you can do that. All right, so that's everything under table setup. And uh, I think we've covered that off pretty good. What I'm going to do right now, I know we're a little bit early, but we're doing, doing good for time, is um, maybe because everything's kind of working today, is uh, we're going to take just a five-minute break and uh, give you a chance to get up and uh, go to the bathroom and have a, have a smoke or whatever it is you, you might want to do. And uh, we'll come back in five minutes, and then we'll continue off with the second half of this presentation, in which case we'll start getting into some of the things within the general setup screen. Okay, so uh, just relax and uh, take five minutes for a break. And I'll...